Hi guys! So today I decided that I wanted to do a little bit of a tutorial. So this is actually going to have two sides to it where it's going to be a little bit more of a beginner's guide to Photoshop and kind of the basic rundown of the tools that you can use and that are available in Photoshop. And also it's going to serve a little bit more of how I do my images. So it's going to be a lot more slowed down and I'm going to actually tell you what I'm doing. And it's gonna be the same type of process that I do in all of my other speed paints. I have a pretty specific technique that I go about creating all of my images and it always ends up being the same formula for how I create them. So I can go ahead and tell you exactly what I'm doing and what types of layer modes I'm using and just all the different details that I don't really talk about but are kind of important as far as when it comes to creating the images that I do. So we can go ahead and get into that. Okay, so we've got Photoshop open and our files set up and I did make a video where I talk about how I like to set up my files and just get everything ready and situated for actually starting to draw. So I'll link to that video, but uh, just a quick rundown of what I actually did do is I select, I tend to prefer to work on more of a cool toned gray background. I do not like working on white and there's no reason to, you can make it any color you want. So I like to usually select that type of color or if I have a very specific color scheme in mind I can choose one that's a little bit warmer or something that goes with the picture but this is usually my default where I start with a cool tone on the background layer and then I have my texture on top and that's set to multiply and when you have the multiply for the uh, layer mode it tends to make it darker so what it does is white becomes transparent and black becomes opaque. So for this it has a darker look to it and you can see the colors through a lot better than just dropping down the opacity and leaving it at a normal layer mode. So I set that to multiply and I turn the opacity down. Okay so at this point I am ready to start sketching and I do have another video where I go through my brushes and why I use them for different purposes so I'll link to that one and you can also download the brushes that I'm actually using there so if you're interested that's where I talk about it and I just always set up a layer right on top of my background so that it just work right there and I drop the opacity down to usually about 40. I like it when it's a little bit more transparent and it feels sketchier. It's easier for me to work in a messier way when it's not a straight black line art. So yeah, I'll go ahead and speed this part up where I'm sketching things out and getting a pretty basic little loose drawing that we can work from. Okay, so we have got the sketch now. This is just a quick little thing to just represent what I want to talk about and everything. But one thing that I do want to mention is the lasso tool. You've probably seen me use it all the time because seriously, this is like the second most important tool for me after the brush because this helps me manipulate what I've already drawn and get things right and have everything the way that I want it to without having to redraw everything like you would traditionally. So. It's just really easy to be able to come in here and select what I want and and maybe I realized oh I actually I want this to be smaller it's too big so I can just I can uh, circle what I want and then I go in right click and click on free transform and it has a lot of different tools that you can use to get it exactly the right way you want it and really manipulate what you've already drawn and that is extremely extremely useful for me as I'm doing, like I said, as I'm doing my sketches as well as my line art to just re rework the things that I've already put down. Okay, so at this point, I feel like I'm ready to go ahead and start line arting. Now, sometimes I will go back in and do another layer of sketching on top where if there's any areas that I feel like I, I didn't really figure out how I wanted it to work in the initial sketch, I can go ahead and do another one and make sure that everything is working and I have everything planned out.
Okay, so at this point I'm gonna go ahead and block in all the colors. So if anything is touching another area of the image, I'll do those on different layers. So like I'll do the skin and the hair on a different layer. And I try to do as many shapes within one layer as I can just to keep everything nice and streamlined and small as possible. So I think for this image, I ended up having three different layers for all of the colors uh, within the character. And then I think that I had two more for the background. Okay, so at this point, I'm feeling pretty good about the colors, at least for a jumping off point. I know that this is definitely still a work in progress and I'm gonna keep working on them and just finessing how I want the colors to look, but I am ready to start moving on to the next step where I add the shadows and the lighting. And so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and put all of my color layers into a folder. That way I can stay really organized and it's just a lot it's a lot more of a pleasant experience working with Photoshop when everything is nice and organized and I know where everything is and I'm not like searching through all these endless layers trying to find what I'm looking for. Anyway, so I'll go ahead and select all of my color layers and just stick them down in a folder here and rename that so I can remember what it is. And for my uh, shadows, I like to do cell shading. So that's where it has this harsh edge and it's not blended in or anything like that. And I just, I really like that graphic look to it. So how I do that is I create another layer on top of my color folder. And I set that to multiply and I usually drop it about 50 just to start out with for opacity that is. So I turn it down right now it's at about 40 and I like to have my shadows cool toned and depending on the image and the color scheme and the mood and everything, that can definitely change, but that's usually my go-to is cool shadows and warm light. Anyway, so for that, I'll go ahead and choose a pretty saturated blue. I like the effect that it has on the colors beneath it, and since it's set to multiply, it affects the colors below it, so it just, it has this really, really nice quality to it where you can still see the color beneath it, and it doesn't just make it a desaturated version of itself. Anyways. Okay, so I pretty much got the shadows done. I decided to go ahead and do the shadows on the background elements on a separate layer. That way I could manipulate them differently. And I have the opacity lower for those just because they're gonna be glowing from the inside. I wanted that dimension, but I didn't want it to be this really strong shadow. So at this point, I am ready to move on to adding highlights. And I've mentioned it before, but the mode that I like to use for my highlights is usually overlay or a combination of overlay and soft light and the reason for that is that the overlay affects the colors and it makes them really saturated and really really interesting and I love the effect of that but sometimes I need it to pop a little bit more so I'll have another layer of soft light below it where I'll duplicate the layer and then create it underneath but I'll show you that after I get into it I usually make that decision after I've already added the highlights and see what the image actually needs. So I'll go ahead and put that in and we can see what it looks like after that. Okay, so at this point, I've got a pretty good understanding of where I want the values and everything to be, but I'm starting to see that he really is blending quite a bit with the background. So what I need to do is I need to change it. Either I'm going to make him lighter or I'm gonna change the types of colors that he or the background is made of. So I'm gonna go ahead and just mess around with it and try a few different things and experiment and see which one I like the best. So we'll go ahead and speed that up.
Okay, so I feel pretty happy about these colors, and as you can see, it changed quite a bit from when I was at the point where I felt like it was a good starting point. So, it, it's just something that is really, you just have to keep working on it till you're happy with it, until it works, and for me, it's, I usually have to work at it for quite a bit, but I like how it's looking. Now, I think that the final step that I'll take here uh, is that I'm gonna go ahead and go back in and do another layer of highlights But I'll make this one a lot more opaque and I think that I'll leave this layer as normal that way um, One of the issues with or not necessarily an issue But one of the things to be aware of for overlay is that it doesn't show up on darker colors nearly as well It looks really great on lighter colors, but it doesn't work great on black or darker colors and I want there to be a highlight on some of these areas so I'm gonna go back in and give it a little bit more of a punch for the highlights and I think that that's probably the last step before I just do some editing on the saturation and everything so we can go ahead and get to that okay so at this point I feel like the image is pretty much complete so what I do at this point is I go in and I will play with the brightness and the saturation and the color for the whole entire piece and usually I end up working on my pieces very dark so I'll end up bumping up the brightness almost in all cases of my images and a thing to remember if you are going to be printing your image you definitely want to be aware of turning up the brightness since printers will pretty much always print your image too dark if you don't do that. So I'm going to go ahead and come in here and click on the brightness and contrast and this is where I can kind of play with it and see at what point I like how it looks and what point I think it's too bright. So yeah, uh, this is definitely something that I've found to be really important for really finishing up a piece and making it look nice and polished. and. And it's just that last finishing touch to really make it right. And that is pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, it was definitely pretty fast, so if you have any questions about any specific things that I did or any steps, I can definitely answer those or any future tutorials if you want me to focus on a specific part of creating an image, I can definitely do that. So just let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything like that. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to hit subscribe so you can catch all my future art videos. And until then, I will see you at my next one. Bye.